welcome you all for this lecture and this video is all about pointing vector and pointing theorem the energy is transferred from the transmitter to the receiver by means of an em wave in free space the power flow in any medium can be obtained using pointing theorem so this theorem was developed in 1884 by an english physicist john h pointing the rate of energy transfer and the electric and magnetic field intensities of the traveling EM wave are related by Poynting's theorem. So we can state the theorem as the vector product of electric field intensity E and magnetic field intensity H at any point is a measure of rate of energy flow at a point. So mathematically it is expressed as P is equals to P cross H and the unit of this is watts per meter square. We all know that the direction of the energy flow of E and H vector is always perpendicular to each other. Therefore, the flow of power can be calculated by a relation of Maxwell's curl equations. So according to Maxwell's equation, del cross H is equals to J plus dou D by dou T. So to calculate the power flow, we are going to follow certain steps to obtain the equation of power flow. So for that, we are going to first take dot product of E vector on both sides. So you will get the equation as E dot del cross H is equal to E dot J plus E dot dou D by dou T. And rearranging the equation, E dot J is equal to E dot del cross H minus E dot dou D by dou T. And we know that E vector del cross H vector can be written as H vector dot del cross E minus del dot E cross H. So now substitute this equation in equation number 3. So in the place of E cross del cross H that is replaced by this equation number 4. Then substitute D is equals to epsilon into E in, in the place of D. Now consider the reverse equation of Maxwell's which is obtained by Faraday's law which is del cross E is equals to minus 2B by dou T. Substitute B is equals to mu H. Now substitute the value of del cross E vector in the above equation mentioned in 5. So the equation will be E dot J equal to minus H dot mu dou D by dou H by dou T minus del cross del into E cross H minus E dot epsilon dou E by dou T. Now consider how we are replacing the value of h dot dou h by dou t. h dot dou h by dou t can be written as dou h square by dou t which again can be scripted as h into dou h by dou t plus h into dou h by dou t which is 2h by dou h by dou t. When you bring this to this side you will get 1 by 2 dou h square by dou t is equal to h into dou h by dou t. Similarly you can write in terms of E field as half dou e square by dou t is equals to e dot dou e by dou t. Now substitute these two equations in equation number 7. So replacing that value of h dou h by dou t and e dou e by dou t, you will get the equation like this. Now rearrange this term as taking dou by dou t common outside and you can have the equations of mu h square by 2 plus epsilon e square by 2. Now take volume integral on both the sides so this will be written as integral over v e dot j into dv which is equal to so integral v e dot j dv is equal to minus integral v dou d by dou t dou by dou t into mu square h by 2 plus epsilon e square by 2 into dv minus integral v del into e cross h vector into dv. Now using divergence theorem we can convert this particular volume integral term 
to surface integral. So you can replace it as integral over s e cross h vector into ds. See, you can replace the last term converting volume to surface that is using divergence theorem. Now, in the above equations, we can see that this is the total value of power which is obtained using pointing theorem and the left hand side indicates the power flow. The first term of this equation in the right hand side indicates power flow of different medium where the medium respective to the value of mu and epsilon it varies. And the negative sign of the power in the last uh, term represents that the power is decreasing. So the cross product of E cross H is known as pointing theorem. The next topic related with this pointing theorem is power flow in a quartz cell cable. So we all know according to pointing theorem P is equals to E cross H. So how you can represent the value of E in terms of current density? That is by using Ohm's law. So point form of Ohm's law is J is equals to sigma E vector. From this equation you can get the value of E vector is equal to J divided by sigma. So power value can be replaced with the value of E as J divided by sigma cross H vector. Now you are going to assume that the direction of current density is along Z direction and the direction of magnetic field intensity is varying with respect to phi that is considering the power flow in a coaxial cable which is in the cylindrical coordinate systems. So J can be replaced as J into AZ and H will be H into A phi. So substitute this in the above equation we get P is equal to J divided by sigma AZ cross H into A phi. Here when you take the cross product of two coordinates of z and phi that will be replaced as minus a rho or a phi that is the first quadrant of the cylindrical systems and we all know the coaxial cable uh, the magnetic field intensity h vector is obtained as h is equals to i by 2 pi r so now this current value can be represented in terms of current density as j is equals to i by a where i by a for area of a circle is represented as pi r square so this value in terms of current is replaced with the representation of current density as i equal to j cross pi r square. So substitute this equation in h vector. So h vector will be j cross pi r square by 2 pi r. Now after cancellation you get the value of h as j r by 2. Now substitute this value of h in the power flow value p. So minus j by sigma jr by 2 into ar vector. So after substitution, after rearranging the terms, you get the value of power as this. So when r is the radius of your coaxial cable, this will be the equation in general. So here we have represented the area of a coaxial cable as small a, sorry, radius of a coaxial cable as small a. So the above equation will be replaced of r in the place of r as a so p equal to j square a by 2 sigma so total power flow will be p cross surface area which is power into 2 pi al that is power flow for a coaxial cable over a length so this is represented in terms of 2 pi a into l so after cancellation you can get the value of total power flow equal to j l by sigma cross a phi j pi a square where j by sigma is represented as voltage term and pi a square is represented as current density is represented as j dot a j dot ds so that is it represented in terms of area so you can replace that value in terms of current as pi a square l as i so the total power flow in a coaxial cable will be obtained as v i then Calculating the instantaneous average and complex pointing vector, the general pointing vector P is equal to E cross H is replaced as instantaneous power flow per unit area. So when you write the instantaneous uh, pointing vector, the equation will be replaced or can be splitted into real and imaginary terms. 
so p instantaneous value is equal to p real plus p imaginary imaginary can either be termed as reactive so separate what is real term and what is reactive term so p real is nothing but half real part of e cross h star e cannot be returned in conjugate value whereas h can be returned as its conjugate so h star p reactive is equals to half imaginary part of e cross h star so this is the real power which is known as average power so when you add when you calculate the instantaneous power you can sum these two values of pre and cool and re-return the complex pointing vector will be p instantaneous p complex which is equal to 1 by 2 real part of e cross h star plus real imaginary part half of imaginary part of e cross h star so this is the final instantaneous complex pointing vector equation for a coaxial cable. Thank you.